Chapter 1 Fire on the Mountain The rich and the powerful often fool the simple and poor people. Read this story about a rich man who tried to fool his servant but was taught a lesson. Once upon a time, there lived a young man in South Africa whose name was Ali. He worked for a rich merchant named Abdullah. The merchant had lots of money, thousands of acres of land and a huge house to live in. He often felt bored for he had nothing to do. He was always looking for something new to do. One day he called Ali and said, I want to see how courageous you are. I will make a bet with you. If you stand on the peak of Mount Lisulu for one full night without food or water or clothing or blanket or fire and not die of the cold, then I will award you ten acres of good farmland with a house and cattle too. Ali could hardly believe what he had heard. Do you really mean it? he asked. I am a man of my word. And I mean it, said Abdullah. Then tomorrow night I shall take up your challenge, said Ali. He thought, for the years to come I shall till my own land. What a good life I shall enjoy. Ali knew that staying on the mountain peak was not easy. The cold winds blowing across the mountain were fierce and merciless. So the next morning he went to his friend, an old sage, and told him about the bet. The sage listened quietly. He sat thinking. Then he said, I have a plan. Far away across the valley is the peak of Lisulu. Go and stand on the highest rock. Down below, I shall build a fire such that you can see it from where you stand. All night you must watch the light of my fire. Do not close your eyes or let the darkness creep upon you. Simply watch the fire. Think of its warmth and think of me, your friend, sitting there. If you do this, you will live, no matter how bitter the night wind is. Ali thanked the old sage. In the evening, Ali informed Abdullah and his servants and set out on his way. At the peak, he removed his clothes and stood there. Cold winds swept the mountain. Down below in the valley, several miles away, Ali could see the light of the sage's fire. It shone like a star in the black night. Time passed slowly. The cold was unbearable. Ali shivered and sneezed, but he kept his eyes upon the twinkling light of the fire. He thought of his friend sitting beside the fire. All night he stood there naked and cold. Never did he close his eyes for a wink. When dawn broke, Ali put on his clothes and came down the mountain, running and sliding in haste. He reported straight to Abdullah. The rich man was surprised to see Ali alive. He questioned his servants. Did he do as I told him to? He asked. Yes, replied the servants. Abdullah turned to Ali. How did you manage to do it? You are indeed a courageous boy. I simply watched the light of a fire in the valley, replied Ali. What? You watched a fire? You did not obey the conditions of the bet. You have lost the bet. You will remain my servant and you will get no land from me, shouted Abdullah. But the fire was not close enough to warm me. It was quite far. In fact, it was miles away. Ali cried, but it was of no use. Abdullah refused to discuss the matter any more. Ali was sad. He went back to the sage and told him what had happened. Take the matter to the judge, the old sage advised. Ali went to the judge and complained against Abdullah. The judge summoned Abdullah and Ali to appear before him. Once again, Ali repeated his story. Indeed, this is a unique case, said the judge. Next week, I shall be attending a dinner hosted by the famous poet Rahim. I want you, Abdullah, to come to the dinner as my guest. Abdullah agreed willingly. 
I shall give my judgment on the day of the feast, announced the judge. On the day of the feast, the judge and Abdullah were received by the poet. From the kitchen came the aroma of wonderful food. They could smell roasted goat, grilled chicken and naan, wheat pancakes. The guests waited eagerly for the meal to be served. Much time passed, but no food was served. They waited. It was now past midnight, but still no food arrived at the table. Only the exciting smell of food drifted into the room, making the guests crave for food. At last, Abdullah spoke out, Rahim, why are you doing this? Why have you not served food to us? Why? Can't you smell the food? asked the judge. The judge was a friend of the poet and had already explained the story of the bed to the poet. Indeed we can, but smelling is not eating. We are terribly hungry. Then how can a fire so far away give warmth to a person? The judge asked Abdullah. If Ali can be warmed by the fire he watched while standing on Mount Lesulu, then have you not been fed by the smell of food coming from the poet's kitchen? All the guests nodded in agreement. The judge now announced his judgment. Abdullah, you are a dishonest man. Abdullah was ashamed for cheating Ali. He thanked the judge and the poet for showing him the right path. He agreed to give Ali the farmland, the house and the cattle as he had promised. The poet ordered food to be served and the feast began. Please subscribe my YouTube.